Hello, all my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we have a few projects, and the first one is going to be using air dry clay with molds. We're going to add and mix some paint to create a different color green. And then we're going to take some rub on letters and add them to a project. And lastly, we're going to repurpose a spindle. So let's get started with the first project. This is a sign that I got recently at a yard sale and it has lettering on it from a wedding and I'm going to be removing that so that I can add my own design on the front. So I'm using my heat gun to heat up those little, uh, I think they're just little vinyl letters and I'm heating it up and scraping those off. It wasn't too too bad, it took a little bit of time but not too bad. I did a little bit of damage to the front of the chalkboard so I'm going to give it a nice coat of black paint and see if I can get rid of some of that. So once I got the lettering all off I gave it a quick sand over the top to level it out and any imperfections that I had made with my razor blade I was able to sand that down just a little bit. You can still see some of the residue from the letters, uh, the outlines, so I'm giving this a nice thick coat of black folk art paint. I want to make a thicker textured paint, so I'm going to add some baking soda to my black folk art paint, make it a little bit thicker. And then when I dab the paint onto the chalkboard, it's going to leave raised spots and I think that will cover up the problems of being able to see the lettering through the chalkboard paint. So I am stippling uh, or just tamping my paintbrush with the thicker paint over the top and again it leaves raised bumps on there, a textured type of paint and that will hopefully cover that up. So I got out my rooster chicken mold and some air dry clay. I'm adding some baking soda to the rooster so that the clay does not stick and it will release quickly and easily. And I'm just taking a piece of my air dry clay and flattening it out. And I'm gonna make a mold of this big rooster. This is the biggest mold that I have and I wanted to use this on my picture, uh, my stand that I have. So I'm just leveling it off and taking off the excess and then just popping him out of the mold. I always have trouble with his little legs so uh, they ended up getting left behind and I tried putting them back on. Don't think they're going to make it. I'm also going to do a couple of these little flowers for the corners of my, my frame and some of these, I don't know, it's kind of like uh, pearl beads. I'll put a link to any of the products that I'm using here from Amazon in the description below. So I'm taking some of my platinum clay paint and I am giving everything a coat of that clay paint. It's just a light, light grayish blue color. So there his legs just didn't make it. I wasn't happy. I'm going to do something different with that. But I need to get him onto the board so that I can see where I am going to stencil. We're going to stencil on this board. And I have this stencil from Dollar Tree. The color I'm going to use for the stencil is called Sunflower from Folk Art Paint. It comes in, well it probably comes singly, but I got it in a pack. Uh, it's called the Farmhouse Pack and I, it was a six pack of different paints that we'd use for farmhouse colors. You've got your greens, your blacks, your browns, and all of that. And I'm going to be using that from this that pack today. So I'm doing Home Sweet Home on this sign and then I am adding E6000 to the back of my rooster along with some hot glue for immediate uh, hold so that I can work with it and not have it move. The E6000 will eventually dry and that'll make it so it sticks really really well. I'm doing the same for the flowers. They're going one in each corner. And then I'll be taking the little pearl 
uh, edges that I'm going to make and putting those down the sides just to add some dimension to the picture. Now I'm dry brushing a little bit of the sunflower color onto my frame and then also a little bit of black on there as well on the pearls, flowers, and the rooster. To cover up where the rooster's little feet were, I took a little bit of black and white checked ribbon, made a little bow, and added that on there. Taking some of my Artful Minds Glaze, it's a nice gray-brown color, and going over the, the pearls, the flowers, and the rooster, and giving them an antique look. This little lighted house is a yard sale find. It's a very primitive little house. Uh, it's very cute, but the coloring I'm a little not really a fan of. And it says originally was $13 and change, and then it was marked down to $3, and it was half off from the $3 when I purchased it. So I'm going to take some moss paint from the folk art and I'm going to mix it with my mushroom paint to give it a little bit of a brownish tint, a brownish hue to the green, uh, not so bright. And this is from the farmhouse colors as well. And I'm just going to give this little house a paint, a paint job all over. Now I originally was going to leave the little uh, off-white or tan windows in the middle I thought they would be kind of pretty that way, but then I decided as I'm painting away that I would go back and paint over them. So I'm doing the roof as well that comes off, and I'm just giving that the green paint job as well. I did two coats uh, of the green on this. So now I'm taking some of the mushroom paint, and I'm going to paint the little chimney on top, the mushroom color. That gets two coats as well. And because the roof and the bottom part of the little house are black, but they were kind of scuffed up and dingy looking, I decided to give them a paint job as well of the black. So as I had the black out, I decided to take my little brush and do the black on the windows where the tan was originally. I thought that would look really good, but after getting it uh, all painted on the front, I got looking at it and decided that I really didn't like the look of it. See what you think. I'm not really sure what I don't like about it. I just don't, don't like it. Um, and so I decided to paint over it. It took two coats of the green paint to just bring it back to the way it was before. And I just left it all green. So I decided to take my paintbrush that I had used for the roof with the black on it and go around the edges heavily to give it a distressed look. As I was doing that, I did all the edges and I decided I wanted the windows to be distressed as well. So I just lightly went over the top of the house and I realized that I really liked the look of that uh, distressed paint look across the top of the house. So that's what I did all the way around to make it look distressed. This is a little rusty star that I have and I glued that right to the front, added my light, and this is what it looks like. I 
to buy this little scoop. It is adorable. I got this at a flea market, and it used to be burgundy, as you can see. I got it for $3. I did pay up for it, but it's so stinking cute. So I decided to do a coat of black paint all over it and get rid of that burgundy color altogether. And then I sanded it back to give it an aged look. I'm going to use some Mod Podge on the front of this little scoop to make a crackle effect with a different color over the top. So when it crackles, you'll see the black through the crack. So this is mushroom color. I'm going to use this over the top. And you just brush it lightly over the Mod Podge. And then I'm going to use my heat gun. You could let this sit overnight or for a few hours, but I wanted to use my heat gun because I always love watching the paint crackle uh, when I do this effect. Now I didn't get a really awesome crackle on it for some reason. I'm not sure if I didn't use enough Mod Podge, but I did sand it down and I got a lot of it uh, to come off on the edges and look really distressed, which is really cool. I like it. So I'm going to take these words that I got. I think I got a sheet of these from the Dollar Tree and it's Cherish Family I picked out. And I'm just putting that on the front, just using the edge of my scissors to rub those letters down into the paint. And then using my finger to make sure it's all on there really well. And once I'm done with this, I give it a quick spray coat of sealer. And then it's ready for de decor. I found this adorable little tray, this thankful tray or box from Goodwill for $3. I don't know if I paid the $3 or if it was half price, but I do really like the box. I like the shape of it. I thought it was very cute. And these handles are very cute, but I don't want them for my project that I'm doing today. So I'm sanding down the thankful on both sides and then giving this a nice coat of folk art black paint. It's very pigmented paint, so this covers really well. I did do a few little touch-up spots, but for the most part, it was a one coat deal. I did that all over this box. I've seen a lot of people do these uh, makeovers using these little boxes in a spindle. And I have these spindles that come from the back of a chair, and I haven't really used very many of them, so I thought I would use it on this box today. I sanded it down, and now I'm using my antique wax watered down with a little bit of black paint mixed in to make a dark stain that leaves the black paint behind just a little bit in certain spots. It comes out really cute. I really love this uh, stain and how it looks with certain projects. So there we go, and you can see where some of the black has settled into spots and where it hasn't, it's just the brown stain color. And I'm now going to take a screw uh, or a drill and make screw holes on both sides so that I can uh, put a screw into this dowel. This box was really simple to do and to cut the spindle down. I thought it would be more involved, but it actually worked out very well. And I really like how it came out. Now I touched up a few spots from where I put the spindle on and scraped it a little bit. Once that was dry, 
I sanded it down and then gave it a seal coat of Rust-Oleum spray. And then I grabbed a sh aluminum sheet that I got from uh, Dollar Tree and cut it down. I want to cover those holes and kind of make it look like they were rusted uh, pieces of metal over the little box. So I just cut them down and then I am coating them with uh, Mod Podge and then adding some spices mix that's got cinnamon, uh, ground coffee, allspice, pumpkin spice. It's very smelly, uh, awesome colors that it comes up with. And it gets really dark once you seal it up, and I really like it. It looks a lot like rust. If you want to see more of uh, how I make it and what I use it on for candles and different projects, I will put a link in the description below to the video that I did on that. If you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you are interested in my projects. I'd really appreciate it. And if you enjoy this video, if you hit the like button, and don't forget to ring the bell so that you will be notified anytime I upload a video. Here's the finished product.